Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. We have Mr. Everett here, uh, Mr. Everett Browning. I say Ed, Edward Br Edwin Everett what? Browning. Edward Brown. And what happened? He's, yeah, sure, he's been here before. He was here trying to tell you about what happens and what needs to be done in Prince George County as far as the school is concerned, as far as the council is concerned, all of those offices, those are things, what's happening with the budget. Uh, Everett, tell me a little bit about uh, what you've been doing and wh what do you think about this thing? Uh, the, we got two big projects coming up, you know, you, yeah, and they are going to cost us some money and, and, and prestige and everything, those are the hospital and the, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? The hospital and, and the FBI project. And FBI. Uh, how many people out there think that the FBI, with your cur current president, is going to approve <laughs> the FBI for Prince George County? Hey, I, hey, remember where you heard it. Uh, I don't think so. Look, you'll see what the governor has done to your education budget. He's slash the education budget. So all of those projects coming to Prince George County, we need someone in there is going to fight like Mr. Browning here. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about this. I mean, these are hot top projects. How you doing, Mr. Brown? Once again, uh, thank you for the invite back. Um, mm -hmm. As we talked before when I was here, I was talking about the 100 black men and the mentoring programs and pro uh, the way we were trying to work with the kids in education. Um, and as we looked at the education, we understand the biggest problem was the infrastructure in our county, that a lot of the uh, current administrations and politicians weren't looking down the line to make sure that we had uh, infrastructure to build generational wealth. Um, and we found ourselves in Prince George's County not being prepared to take on the hospital, to take on the FBI. Um, and so as I talked to families and I talked to business owners, I found out that all they're getting is excuses and the blame game. Uh, when everyone wants to uh, point to Hogan or point to Trump to say why we're suffering in that county. However, uh, the President Trump has only been in uh, office now two months and uh, Hogan's been in office two years. But this problem in Prince George's County has been going on a lot longer than that. Oh, yeah. So there's accountability there. Uh, right. Um, where we were, our focus was more on getting the MGM than it was getting a hospital mm. uh, to get to get the FBI to come uh, to get in our schools. And now we're facing those consequences where we have politicians looking at today and no one was looking down the line for tomorrow to make sure we're prepared for our kids. So it's definitely time for us to look at bringing in new leadership. Um, and, and that's when I hope to get uh, the support of the community to be a part of a team who understands that you need to you need to look wholeheartedly when you're moving forward in this community. There's there's money, there's education and there's opportunity. But if we're not prepared to understand how it works, if we don't understand and able to work with Governor Hogan or work with um, Annapolis and the county and the cities, mm -hmm. we're going to continuously be one step behind. Our mm -hmm. schools are going to be last. Our, our tax is going to keep going up. And we're going to be known as one of the most educated and affluent African-American counties in the country. However, one of the most efficient ones. Mm -hmm. And that's right. unfortunate. Right. Well, well a, a lot of things uh, are going to start happening, Mr. Browning. And now I'm hoping that the people get involved because it starts with uh, most of them uh, uh, talking about MGM. They're talking about in, in the last two months, uh, 50 million, you know, but uh, my experience uh, is that uh, although uh, funds may be earmarked for a certain uh, s section, yes. when you get a new administration in there, all they have to do is get a quorum. And then I, I, I tell, uh, from one, I'm from one district, I tell them, I say, hey, I need this in my district, you vote for that, and they transfer the money. I'm concerned about uh, uh, th this money coming. No one has shown uh, the people basically where, they were, okay, it's two months, we got $50 million from the uh, MGM. Everybody's <laughs> jumping and hollering, you know. And then you have the school board, that's a good example, just lost $6.4 million Head Start program. And they have, uh, school board has problems too because with the, what they did, the, the fact that they lost this money was 
the school board was not together. The chairman uh, uh, and the county exec, they did not do the job. They protected the people that caused the education system to lose money. And that's, that's basically what happened. The, the school board lost $6.4 million. And the school, do you realize, the school board's budget is 60-some percent of the Prince George County budget. 60-some, and they haven't had an audit in eight years. Tell me a little bit, what do you think about that? I, I think one of the biggest problems we have is there's a, definitely a lack of transparent, a transparency and accountability in our government. Uh, and the school board right now, instead of focusing on our kids, there seems to be a lot of infighting between the uh, school board and um, Superintendent uh, Dr. Maxwell. Uh, they, they have to find a way to work together to put the kids first and to make sure that the resources are there. Um, we, we live in a day that it, it's, it's ridiculous that we've gone eight years without the audit, mm -hmm. just like it's been so long since we've updated our, our planning. No, um, the planning, and, I, I, and it's been <laughs> almost, almost 50 something years since we've done a right. planning. You're right. When sir. I was on the board, the same problem we had. Everybody in the commercial was hot, talking about how antique Prince George's County planning system is. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. So, I mean, it, and it all ties together. Our, our economic base and our education ties together, and we must understand that. We got to. We get more people involved as we educate the electorate. There seems to be the idea that the Prince George's County citizens can't understand or comprehend what's going on. Um, the, the county council, the school board, should do a better job of reaching out and engaging the community to explain the issues and getting their input. Um, as we look at everything from public schools to charter schools to uh, property values because of schools, um, all you have is frustrated citizens, and instead of getting them answers and being accountable, everyone wants to play the blame game. They take credit for the good stuff, they say, hey, the the graduation rate is up, but then when it comes to losing money or Tesco's going down, it's always that's somebody else's problem. Um, to be able to open the books, let us know where the money's going, how it's being spent, and, and have input from just educated taxpayers. There's so many college educated uh, family and families and parents in this the area who can have, who have ideas on what's best for their kids and what's best to make things better. And far as the, the planning going, the problem is when almost 70% of our budget comes from uh, residential yeah. taxes instead of commercial taxes, commercial. we're not growing. And um, we're, we're the worst county as far as commercial but, development. It, it, by, far, by far the worst, and we, we're not updating that. So where, mm. where are these funds coming from? What are we doing to make sure that our kids have somewhere uh, and they can work, that our kids have somewhere that they can shop, that our, our money goes around our community at least 10 times before it leaves. In other communities, a dollar goes around the community maybe about 30 times before it leaves. And our community goes around maybe once or twice and then it's gone to someone else's pocket. How many minority business? When the FBI comes, the MGM right. comes, the hospital comes, what are we doing to make sure that minority businesses are taken care of and making sure that those businesses are investing in our schools to make sure gener generational wealth is not just an idea, mm -hmm. but a mandate in this right. county. Right, and, and, and what happens with this, uh, the promises that they make with these different projects, just like MGM is going to the education, uh, they have $50 billion million and, and so much money is going to be brought in by the hospital, mm -hmm. so much money if, in fact, uh, uh, the President of the United States approved the FBI, that, that's on uh, shaky grounds Real now shaky. With, with the, uh, and, and, uh, monitoring these programs. Th this is something right now uh, I, I would like to see and the citizens would like to see a report from MGM basically how much money and what that money that uh, is given to the Board of Education is doing within the school budget. You're saying that they just replaced the money from uh, one project to another and there's no improvement in the school because of the fact that the money is going to be used for so something well, else, a, a, like a, salaries. A, 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 salaries a, a, or projects. Right. Or right. You know, here, here on the school board, they gave, after losing 6.4, they gave uh, the superintendent a raise. Yes, sir. And gave him a two-year contract, you know, after s losing that much money. See, no one is talking about that. No, you, no, know? you know, let's talk about the fact that they're pushing a, a law through right now to give 
the MGM an extension on their tax, their property tax break mm -hmm. for, for coming here for another five years. Mm -hmm. uh, they sold us on the fact that this MG is going to come, it's going to be money's going to be pushed into the school. But what they didn't tell us was the fine print that mm -hmm. that money coming to the school wouldn't be an additional money. That money would just replace the, the current budget. So the budget did, did, is not increasing uh, based on the MGM money coming in. The budget for school is staying the same. They're just taking that money that was going to the school. Right. So if the MGM, let's say, gives $50, 50 million, they'll take 50 million of the old budget and put that into, us, uh, as you know, the general fund to be used at yeah. discretion. Right. So the school is not increasing by the MGM. Um, and, and these are things that when, he, when politicians are pushing for support, they fail to be transparent, you know, and, and gi give the, the voters a chance to understand and make their decision. Give them the clear story, the full story. That way we can make sure what's in the best interest of our, our families and our lives as because we're the, we're at 70 percent. We're paying the tax base yeah. is our the homeowners are paying the tax base right now and we're not getting any input. And that's why you have maybe 10 to 15 percent voter turnout because people are frustrated. Yeah, they're, they're frustrated. Well, well, the same thing with the, you know, people sitting on their hands, but. Those are two uh, important projects that's coming is the hospital. And due to the fact they're associated with the University of Maryland, we should be emphasizing a research uh, yes. division in this hospital. As, uh, what is it, John? Uh, like, as in John Hopkins in Baltimore. John Hopkins and, and in Baltimore and places like that. When you have a research uh, arm in your hospital, what happens is people, one person gave $60 million yes. to John Hopkins just because, hey, they had the money and they felt that that research was important to them. They had something personal, but, but they gave, and if you go around the country, most of your research are, are supported by the people, not yes. by the government. And what donations that people give, you see it on television yes. all the time. You know, if send donations for research for different problems that we have. And th I noticed they had de-emphasizing that. They should, should be working with University of America, uh, uh, University of Maryland, to find out what phase, what kind of research can they develop in this hospital because then it becomes worldwide. Everybody, and yes, you, you don't have to depend on the budget for every little thing because you get the don your donation rate is up. And right now, they should be have a campaign for that hospital. I, I, you, you know, the people and get information from the people as far as a research unit, which w w what would you like to have in, in there? Because that attracts uh, money. They always talk about money, and the same thing, uh, you better cross your fingers and toes as far as the, <laughs> everybody knows that has two hours of sense, the FBI's in, uh, program is in deep trouble yes. with uh, your president. No if and and abouts, buts about it. All you have to do is look at the facts. Yes. The facts are there. And then your governor, instead of him pushing something for the hospital, he's talking about taking money away from the hospital. And, and yes, sir. I mean, what's the problem with that is, as you look at it, is you're right. A research hospital, what, what it also becomes is a teaching hospital. Right. So a teaching University hospital. University So you become a teaching hospital and you have grants coming from all over the country and all over the world to send students here to yeah. invest in a hospital. Right. When we were looking at make, making that this hospital a teaching hospital, but then we got into a back and forth with the Anne Arundel Hospital because they said they want to do their research lab mm -hmm. and money was going there. And I tell people over the last 10 years, uh, Anne Arundel County has built a new hospital. Howard County has built a new hospital. Everyone's done this except for Prince George's County. Right. And these counties, they were able to work with the governor to get the money. They was able to internally finance. But when it comes to Prince George's County and our leadership, we always have excuses why we can't get things done. We, we currently have the president of the Senate, the majority whip of the Senate, and two other senior senators in Annapolis from Prince George's County, and yet all these other counties are getting these things done before us. The projects. A, a projects completed yeah, right. and done and run, but in Prince George's County, the money isn't there for some reason, and we're always squabbling over, well, you promised us this 15 million or this 20 million, and then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. we, we, right. we pause and don't right. move forward. Right. Um, so, uh, so I hope that as we move forward, the thing is, we might not get everything we want now, 
but get the hospital built. Mm -hmm. And once the hospital's built, it's teaching, it's doing research, right. the money was coming, you can grow from there and you yep. will find outside investors. Like you said, right. if one person can give 60 million John Hopkins, yeah. why are we protesting the governor? Because he cut our thing by 15 million yeah, from, right. from the governor. Right. Um, as far as the FBI, that, that's another project that we have to figure out what happens if they don't come? Mm -hmm. What are we going yeah. to do? Right. And, and what are we offering them to come? Because right now in Prince George's County, when you talk to the employees of the FBI, what are we doing to sell them to live here? Because mm -hmm. most of the employees say, well, we'll work there, mm -hmm. but then we'll drive back home. Mm -hmm. uh, another one of my initiatives is, I'm a retired military man. I did uh -huh. 20, you know, 20 years in the Navy is, we have six bases here and almost over 300,000 military families in this area between Andrews and Fort Meade and uh, Anacosta in, in, the, in um, bowling, mm -hmm. but yet those military families are hesitant to come to Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. You know, when they check in, they ask about where to live at, and Prince George's County, or they're told, don't go there. They're told it's crime, it's the mm -hmm. school system, yeah. it's the it's high taxes. Reputation. The reputation is bad, but there is no initiative to go there and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. There are great places to live in Prince George's County. There are great mm -hmm. neighborhoods. There are great schools. There are great there's opportunities. And there's employment. Yeah, and there's See? employment, but we don't, <laughs> for, for <laughs> then, once you get the military families, you get their spouses mm -hmm. who, who may not be working or working mm -hmm. part-time. They're involved in the schools and helping the teachers out. Mm -hmm. So, but we don't reach out to think outside of our box. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our politicians are so happy with controlling the small box that they control, you know, being the big fish in a small, a small mm -hmm. bowl. Mm -hmm. But Prince George's County is not that small bowl. Mm -hmm. It's not that rural place mm -hmm. it used to be when you came here yeah, and, and right. too many years ago. It's a big county that, that can be on the national map if we have leadership who understands mm -hmm. how to get deals done. Right. And have uh, connections not only because my question is what is currently uh, Mr. Brown and uh, I mean Congressman Brown and, and um, Congressman Hoyer, mm -hmm. what are they doing right now to get FBI here, mm -hmm. or are they just, you know, do they have mm -hmm. any insight well, with the well, president? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that they the people should be be involved, not just sitting uh, with the uh, yes. holding their hands because they know the type of president that they have that that project is in deep trouble. Yes. No matter what they say, that project, and also what if you want to get involved in the commercial aspects of, you got to be competitive. Yes. And you become competitive when you change your system for attracting commercial businesses. Yes, and sir. that that is the thing, and I've had the experience. That's the thing that I hear from the business world. All the time, is that, yes. Uh, is the fact that, and what happens is that that also uh, attracts people with the higher income because they getting something for the money. See, the way it is now, the top thing, uh, you yourself just evaluate for when you move someone, you, th you think of two things, education and crime. Yes. <laughs> and, and ability to be able to shop in your own neighborhood. How many people in Prince George County shop in the, in the adjoining counties because they don't have the quality stores there? Just raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, sir. And um, as I tell people, I'll bring before those store, these stores come to the county, they do analysis. They don't just look like who has money now. They right. want to know who's Future. going to be who's going to be my customers ten years from now. So they look at the education base and see how many how many uh, college students are coming there. Right. And then they look at the, the e income base for 18 through 30. Mm -hmm. How many people are coming here with those type of jobs? Mm -hmm. So we, we can look now and say, yeah, well, I got money to spend, but are your kids going to be here with that type of money? Are we mm -hmm. building that type of infrastructure? Are we reaching out to make those deals? Like you said, with our current president, He's a businessman. Yeah. You're not going to bully him and tell and make fun. He doesn't care what you say about him. Right. But he's a businessman. If you if you work and let him know that this is going to be economically smart and benefit, he'll come have a conversation. But just writing letters or calling, calling him names, that's not going to do anything for him. Mm -hmm. You know, business is sitting at the table. Like you, uh, I'm a small business. I'm a small business owner, and I talk to a lot of my, my colleagues who have. Mm -hmm. Minorities who have huge businesses, but they have them in Alexandria. They have yeah. them in Rondo and <laughs> Hanover. Right. And I said, well, why don't you come to Prince George's County? He said, it's mm -hmm. too much work. And it seems as if Prince George's County, because of the lack of accountability mm -hmm. and a mismanagement of funds by the 
by the politicians, mm -hmm. they try to make up for it by punishing successful people, mm -hmm. whether it's the high taxes or business owners. They say, well, we messed this money up. Like you said, we've lost this six million. So yeah. let's All overcharge right. this business, these All businesses right. when they come here so we can hide it. Mm -hmm. Or let's oh, let's raise these property taxes so we can hide our inefficiency. Mm -hmm. So but we don't want anybody to look in our books. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of transparency, integrity, mm -hmm. and accountability to I, get those businesses I, I, I here. I don't think any any ed board of education in this metropolitan area has lost a pro Head Start program, six point four million dollars. No, sir. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And 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 what ha uh, the success of the program has been lost. Now, why would you move into an area where they have lost this educational? One of the top uh, educational program is Head Start. Everybody, when you took, that's the first thing you want yes. to do is make sure your child gets the right start. Yes. You know, and but this program is an old program. And they, uh, the Board of Education, like I say, has two black eyes with the fact that they haven't had an audit. And people out there, you're paying your money, uh, and 60-something 60, 60 percent of your money goes in the Board of Education, and they produce yes. things like that. They have infighting in the Board of Education right now. All you have to do is turn on your TV. You see where the chairman is being attacked. You see where the uh, members are talking about uh, getting rid of the chairman, getting rid of the superintendent. Why? Uh, because those people, they are affected by yes. the... And, and they are correct because n just call in, let me know what jurisdictions in this metropolitan area have lost a $6.4 million dollar yes. program. It doesn't have to be Head Start, just that a program of that magnitude. And that a lot of people come in the area, they look at things like that. They, they, say, they look at, you know. <laughs> but I don't want my child in that uh, type of environment. That type of environment, sir, yeah. you're right. And even the public schools, when you look at whether it's the, the violence or the graduation rate or the scores. And so I know in a lot of neighborhoods and people say, well, uh, as my, my neighbors are sending their kids to charter school or private schools. And someone assumes that because your kids in a private school, you must be rich. But I know a lot of people are working extra jobs <laughs> and sacrificing to, to, be, to make sure that their kids can have education in, in, in a choice. Um, and I think that we have to do both. We have to make sure that our, our public schools are, are improved and sufficient. But at the same time, if a parent decides that, well, I don't have time to wait for the schools to get better. I have to invest in my kids yeah, now. Right. I'm paying taxes exactly. and I want to send my kids to a different school that we support them some type of way or give them whether it's a tax incentive or something mm -hmm. like that. Because mm -hmm. I tell people, this is my analogy, mm -hmm. if they tell you that the water coming to your house is, is lead and you, mm -hmm. you don't want to give it to your kids, mm -hmm. so you go buy bottled water, yeah. but then they still send you a full uh, water bill, you're like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I only got this bottle of water because your water was bad. Yeah. And so the people going to these private and charter schools are because your schools are not preparing parent my kids. Now, I've talked to teachers. I've talked to the, uh, the teachers union. And there are a lot of passionate people who are working hard to improve the schools. Yeah. And there's a lot of school board members who really, who really care. The problem is we're not on the same page because there's no leadership at the top mm -hmm. giving a, co a cohesive vision. You know, there, there are people who are benefiting from the, uh, the divisive, the, everybody being divided. And we have to get them on the same yeah. page. Well, that's what I'm saying. All, all people, the ones that don't feel that they want to go to these, just look at the television, the, the way that the school board meetings yes. are, are held and, and the animosity that uh, the school board members have yes. against the chairman and against the superintendent. Uh, yes. uh, uh, the superintendent. Uh, and, and when you have that type of animosity on the top, uh, you're not going to be positive. So you're busy, busy, as they say, watching your back. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. But uh, those are things that make uh, developers, they say, why should I invest uh, a business? Why should I invest in uh, uh, a county that really don't have their planning system yes. uh, up to date? And the Prince George County planning system is not up to date. Not up to date. The tax uh, I, codes. I, I know from firsthand <laughs> experience. And what happens is you make it difficult for the commercial to come yes. in. Uh, I, I was asked, they said, why is it, Ed, that we have more uh, 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 metro station in Prince George County uh, outside the Beltway than anybody, and we have the worst 
a commercial development yes. around the metro station? Answer that question. Why is yes. it? You go to the metro station in Prince George County, uh, and what do you find? Liquor stores, yes. uh, 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 used car dealers, and that type of uh, uh, commercial, which doesn't bring any <laughs> funds in. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I think that's because our metro stations aren't meant to bring people here. Mm. It's meant to bring people out to work, then get them back home. Right. So then, you know, our metro station wasn't wasn't meant for someone to live outside of our county to come here and work and mm. shop. Mm. It's meant to bus people out of that county. And I tell people, if you want to look at the you know developments they want to do in the Suitland area and Cap District Heights area, look what happened in D.C. They built it up, and everyone couldn't afford to live there anymore, right. and they was pushed out. Right. And as you see now, they're still surely trying to push the Prince George's County residents down to Charles County. Yeah. They said, we'll redevelop yeah. your area, <laughs> but you can't afford to stay here anymore. <laughs> right. You know? Okay, well, tell us some of your major things. We're going to wrap this up. Yes, sir. Now, you're running for uh, yes, sir. House I'm, I'm, of Delegates now. Tell us just wh what are some of the things you, uh, you feel is very important. You got about two minutes. Well, uh, thank you. Like I said, I'm, I'm running to represent District 24, Prince George's County. And my, my focus is to make sure that we bring about education and economic uh, development, that someone understands that we redo the planning laws and that we look at the education budgeting, transparency, integrity to, to look forward, to start looking forward. We have in our district right now where the hospital is supposed to go. We also have FedEx Field. Within five years, someone has to make a decision. Are we going to invest $500 million in the Redskins to stay, or what are we going to do with our land to make our community better? The biggest thing I'm bringing to the table, 20 years in the military, for the last five years I've been a, a program manager for the Department of Defense. I understand that our biggest customer in this area and our biggest employer is the government. How do we make sure our kids are prepared to take on government jobs, to be successful, to buy homes where we're coming? Um, new and bringing in people who've been there from around the world mm. to open up the doors and make sure everyone has a voice. Mm. That's my, my main platform is to look at bringing military families here, bringing mm. businesses here, mm. and making sure families are comfortable with their kids being in public or private school that they're going to get a quality education and be safe. Yes, because you, you had the, the environment, you'd have to have the type of uh, industry in your county to produce. Yes, sir. Now, M Montgomery County, I think we're the only county that uh, live on taxes. <laughs> property taxes, yes. Property Every, everyone taxes. else lives on we commercial taxes. We live on property taxes. The rest of the counties around here, the commercial is the backbone yes. and of progress. And this is what you have to get your, uh, get your representatives to start thinking, you know. And when the money comes in, if it's earmarked for education, it sh you should have some kind of system that you make sure the money, uh, someone tell me, is it, you sure that 50 million from MGM is going into the Board of Education? Mr. Browning there was telling you what, what happens to uh, the money coming in the Board of Education. He's involved in it. He knows something about it. Yes, sir. And then, uh, so uh, all of us do, but what we have to do is get involved in the uh, commercial aspects of this county especially the minority. What happened to all the minority businessmen? Here, here you have a county that's at least 50% minority, and 60, you don't have 65%. any large, you don't yes. have any large uh, commercial business here in Prince George County. But you have plenty of homes, you know, but nothing to make money. All, everything is to uh, make money for the uh, county. So I leave the account. Uh, think about it. Okay, this has been Ed Brown. See you next time. Don't forget, you got to get involved on this FBI, get involved with the hospital. And when I say get involved, I'm talking about getting to the meetings and voicing your opinion. I know you have one. See you next time. <laughs>